Hi, I'm Dave Moran. I'm the co-author of the Visual Histology DVD series. This film clip is to give you a brief introduction to what one of the individual DVDs is like. Here we are with the Namarsky microscope looking at the same specimen and the arrow is pointing to an axon which you can see in some three-dimensional relief and you can see it very clearly come up here, cross this space, go over and end in this motor end plate here and you can see this other axon crossing the muscle fiber and going up and ending right here and down on the bottom of the screen you can see a sort of thick axon waving like a snake as it goes up towards its termination in the motor end plate here. Now, as you know, axons from nerves not only contact muscles, they contact other nerves as well. And this electron micrograph is a particularly good view of a specialized kind of synapse called a crest synapse in which we have different axon terminals making a synapse with a single dendrite. One of the axon terminals is here, the dendrite is here, and the dendrite cytoplasm goes up in these crests, like this one here, and this one here, and this one here. The axon terminal here has a number of synaptic vesicles which are filled with transmitter substance which will be liberated into the synaptic cleft, which is here. And the synaptic cleft is the space between the cell membrane of the axon and the cell membrane of the dendrite here. So in this way, excitation passes from the axon to the dendrite by way of a synapse. Now the microscopic images that we've seen so far have been of myelinated nerves be aware that there are lots of unmyelinated nerve fibers as well. And very often you'll find unmyelinated nerve fibers and myelinated nerve fibers sitting side by side in the same nerve bundle in a peripheral nerve. That's what we've got here. This is an image of a cross section through a mixed nerve, a peripheral nerve that contains both myelinated fibers, like these here, and unmyelinated fibers, like the ones in this field here. Now, in this case, the unmyelinated fibers are too small to resolve individually, so what they look like is sort of a pink wash, and this unfortunately makes unmyelinated nerves very hard to recognize in standard histological preparations. It's one of the hardest things to see. So very often, if you look at something and it's amorphous and you don't know what it is, the chances are it's an unmyelinated nerve. You see some capillaries filled with red blood cells here as well, and you see nuclei of glial cells, and then the connective tissue investment that surrounds the entire nerve bundle here. Unmyelinated nerves are much easier to recognize when you see them in the electron microscope. This electron micrograph is from your visual histology textbook, and it contains a number of unmyelinated nerve fibers here, 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 and here, and some of them are very small. If you look at this one over here, this nerve fiber is barely larger in diameter than the mitochondrion inside it, and mitochondria tend to be about a tenth of a micrometer or so in diameter. So this nerve fiber is very small indeed, certainly too small to be seen with the light microscope. Now, in amongst these unmyelinated nerve fibers, we see a myelinated neuron right here, a myelinated axon, and the Schwann cell that surrounds it. This is the nucleus of the Schwann cell here. Over here, we see the nucleus of a glial cell that surrounds, but does not myelinate, a number of individual unmyelinated nerve fibers, and this is absolutely characteristic of the peripheral nervous system. You will find a single glial cell investing a large number of unmyelinated fibers. On the other hand, in the peripheral nervous system, a single Schwann cell will myelinate one axon. There are a number of collections of nerve cells throughout the body which are called ganglia. A ganglion is a group of nerve cells and fibers. This image right here is a cross-section through a dorsal root ganglion. The dorsal root ganglion located in association with the spinal cord, is the site at which sensory nerve fibers send their input into the spinal cord, and the cell bodies of these sensory fibers are located in the dorsal root ganglia. In this particular image, near the periphery, you can see a number of large, round cell bodies of the pseudo-unipolar neurons that are characteristic of the dorsal root ganglion, and in the center, you can see cross-sections through myelinated axons. This particular preparation has been made with osmium tetroxide, and so the myelin sheaths will appear dark brown, and the cell bodies will look a sort of light brown. This is a higher magnification view of a section taken through a dorsal root ganglion that's stained with toluidine blue. And the arrow is pointing at one of the large cell bodies of a sensory neuron. And here you can see the cell body contains a reasonable amount of nissel substance out here, and a large centrally located nucleus with 
here one nucleolus, and in some cases you see two nucleoli.